Right, tell you there champs, now there it is. Yes, that is the MacBook Pro 14. I will be getting the 16 inch in and I will be comparing it to the fastest Windows laptops, the last gen MacBook Pros, my 27 inch iMac and even a beast gaming desktop because there's some things you won't believe about this MacBook Pro. And this is your chance to tell me what you want tested because over the next few days, possibly even a week or so, as I said, we'll be comparing this to everything. We'll be doing lots of tests. I'll do a specific gaming review, of course. And I do have the MacBook Pro 16 inch big boy, the one with the big GPU coming very soon. So we're going to unbox it, have a close look, we'll do a few benchmarks and as you can see, you know, two of the top Windows laptops, both with RTX 3080s, you know, the best, fastest CPUs. I'll be comparing it to Intel and AMD. Let's crack on and have a look. I've got to say, first off with the box, that is one of the ugliest wallpapers I've ever seen. So there we have it there, you can see there, they're trying to keep the Apple logo very shiny. Right away, Ooh. she's a tubby boy for a 14, especially compared to some of the light laptops. But you know, if it's got the performance there, who cares? You have your standard fare here, but apparently you get black stickers. So let's have a look at those. Oh, oh. and this one here, I think it's a 62 watt power brick because I indeed have the Ace of Base. So I decided to go with the base model with the 14 inch and I decided to spec up the 16 inch. And believe me, you probably don't need more than the base. We'll talk about that later. Okay, so I tell a lie, it's a 67 watt power brick, this one. So when you purchase the 14 inch Mac, there are two power supplies. On the entry level, you have this one. This is the 67 watt one. And then also you have the 96 watt one, if you get the 10 core. It's a $20 upgrade option too. So you might as well get the 96 watt one, then you'll get fast charging, right? And then inside here, we have the USB-C to MagSafe. So that's the cable that connects to the brick there. No extension cable. So you probably have to buy one of those if you want. Oh, I'm loving this. It's paper now instead of plastic. That's good. And look at that. Look at that MacBook Pro there. It's actually like it's stamped into the, you know, the aluminium there. It's probably etched out rather than stamped. Why didn't they always do paper? Seriously. This is space gray and there you can see the feet, the big feet that raises it up a bit so you get, you know, a bit better airflow. Now one thing I noticed just handling this is when you handle it, you're going to grab these vents here. So yeah, that's a bit different. So picking this up, you can notice that it's a lot chunkier than the, you know, the last model. And yeah, you can tell this is a pro thing. Yeah, it is a pro machine. So let's open her up and do some tests, eh? Now they did say the keyboard has a mechanical feel to it and I can tell you now it feels nice I'm not sure it has a mechanical feel to it so let's dig into it and um, we'll do some tests and we'll check out this display really closely all right let's get into it I'll give you my initial impressions I'll give you some benchmarks and I will be charting this up but I'm just trying to get you the benchmarks out and we're going to get into this screen in a sec and of course i'll be comparing them to all those pc laptops and of course the 16 inch when it comes in first things first they fixed the usb problem where it used to read discs at half speed so on the m1 mac this will only read at half speed with this they fixed whatever issues they had with the usbs now it's reading full speed i hate how macs tell you off every time you pull out a disc this chassis actually has a clink in it I don't know what that clink is. I might just tighten the screws up, see how we go. I did also notice that when I put this laptop down, the screen would just go back. Uh, it seems very loose, so I don't know. Sample size of one, maybe this is just a bit loose, but when I was putting it down, the screen was going back, which I don't like. Now, when it comes to this display, oh my God. Now it actually isn't a 10 bit display, which was a little bit disappointing, but it is HDR, Dolby Vision, 1000 nits brightness, wide color gamut, P3. Let me tell you, on this screen, this is up full blast. It looked amazing, the stuff on this. Now I won't play it for too long, but. It's so spectacular. It's easy to miss the smaller things in life. But take a closer look. I mean, this display is just amazing. Um, hopefully I don't get sprung for copyright there. So yeah, the display is amazing. The sound is amazing. I can tell you that straight off the bat. The keyboard is good. It doesn't have the, you know, mechanical feel that Apple reckon there is.
it is tactile but yeah it is a good keyboard i will say however it's not as good as the thinkpad keyboard but when it comes to trackpad the trackpad is much better on the mac i can tell you that much now when it comes to display this is a 120 hertz display but i don't think the pixel response is very fast it is ghosty if we have a look here if i can get that to yeah looks very ghosty so i have no idea when it's running at 120 hertz and when it's not but one thing i did notice was the ghosty feel of it now when is it running 120 hertz i have no idea okay this seems you know pretty smoothish but i can still see the ghostiness of it so is it running at 120 hertz now i don't know because it's dynamic right it goes up and down so when does it use it when doesn't it use it i really can't tell so that's a good thing but um i can definitely notice that it is ghosty i'll show you in slow motion too right yeah i've got to say it's the best display i've seen on a laptop without doubt without question now i must be the only person in the world that didn't like magsafe and the reason i didn't like it is because the magnet was very weak it used to disconnect all the time it really annoyed me this is not gonna disconnect it's gonna have to take a real big jerk to get that out like i can pull it along it's not going to disconnect like the old one the old one was really bad it just disconnected all the time and this one <laughs> it takes a lot of force right to get that out now one thing that's going to blow you away as you've already seen with content creation you know benchmarks Puget system that this out benches well not this particular model but at least the 16 core version and by the way this is the 8 core version so it's got two less performance cores it's got a 14 core gpu instead of a 16 core gpu and it's got a 512 gigabyte ssd 16 gigabytes of unified memory as well now here's the thing if you're a music producer or someone that video edits h.265 hgvc or prores you won't need any more than this unless you really multitask with lots of apps open or you video edit with many tracks many effects and stuff like that if you're just like a normal person like a youtuber you know a few layers and whatever this will get you by no problem right because of the magic of the media encoder and the prores encoder that does most of the work and this thing here outperforms a rtx 3090 desktop pc with an amd 5950 and yes i checked it myself it does in playback not in exporting it's not as fast as that for exporting but in playback it is super smooth with anything h.264 h.265 and prores better than like a 3090 and yes you've seen the 16 core version of this outbench a 3090 in Puget system benchmark that is real now because this is the small ssd so a 512 gig ssd you're not getting the full speed right you're only getting 5400 writes i think you need the two terabyte model to get the 7000 read speed so that's the speed it is still super fast of course this is the eight core it's missing two cores there's the geek bench you can compare it yourself this will all be charted up when i compare it to the other laptops here is the geek bench score for metal as you can see it's well down i think it's 68,000 for the 32 core so this is 38,000 still you got the decoders right if you're a video editor so here's cinebench and as you can see the single core score is pretty much the same as the like 10 core version it's a little bit short of what intel can do now they can do over 1600 for single core but the magic of this is it uses much less power and all these benchmarks are done on battery and i never heard the fan once and didn't get hot well at least i couldn't tell if it was getting hot and there you can see the multi-core score now remember this is the eight core version that is faster than 11750H, so the 6 core Intel H part, so the 45 watt part. This is faster. It's also as fast as the 8 core MacBook Pro 16. So if you get the extra two cores, it's going to be faster than the MacBook Pro 16. And then it will be keeping up with, you know, the 5900HX and 11800H or whatever from Intel. You put it on battery and it performs the same, right? So what about the notch? Well, the notch is good, right? because the notch gets to offend you twice all right you see the notch here it offends your eyes okay and then you put it in full screen mode and then you got forehead mode so it offends you twice so you get twice the bang for your buck there extra you know hurt to your eyes and yeah that's all i'm gonna say on the notch um yeah so this does come with three thunderbolt 4s the magsafe and it also has the hdmi 2.0 which that sucks it should be 2.1 and it has an sd card reader too but it's a slow sd card reader 250 megabytes per second read there it's not one of the uh2 pluses or whatever it is so good they put them there but honestly i'd rather an extra thunderbolt port 
that's just me anyway make sure you sub up i'm going to be comparing this to everything to 16 inch all the laptops the pc laptops and we'll see which one is right for you and of course the gaming review will be coming so yeah catch you in the next one ciao